Alrighty, and we meet once again. This is video number one of our Move Advanced Smart Contract Language Tutorial. We now will take a look at how we store data in a Move Smart Contract or a module. Now we are getting into deeper waters because we now have to understand that the whole purpose of deploying a smart contract on a blockchain is to store decentralized data. There's certain attributes that I need to pass so that I can classify the data based on the account that stored that data. Data. Let's say I have my wallet and I execute a function to store some tokens on a liquidity pool or a staking pool. I need to know that I store those tokens and it has to be registered on the blockchain in the storage location. Okay, which means that I will be passing the signer to reference. I stored 50 tokens on a liquidity pool. That means that I associate those 50 tokens to the address of the account that performed that execution. If I want to store data based on a user account, that means that I have to reference that data to a key item. The key item is going to be the wallet address or the account that made that execution, that stored that data on the blockchain. Without wasting any more time, let's go ahead and let's make this happen. Let's move. We begin. By the way, if you haven't taken a look at the Move Smart Contract Basics tutorial, I am sharing the link to that playlist in the video description. I suggest you take a look at that tutorial first and go over the 10 videos in that tutorial so then you are not lost. All right, let's go. The signer. The signer is the account that is going to execute a function that is going to sign and is going to send that transaction on the blockchain. Let's create a file. I'm going to call this signer demo and we begin. Let's start by writing the module, module net to def ADDR. And let's call this signer demo. All right, we are going to import the signer from the standard library. So we're going to say use STD and we will invoke signer. Okay. Now we are also going to work with debug because we want to output the address of the signer when we make the call and we'll write a test function that will display that in the console. Once we do the test, so I'm going to say use STD debug. And from there, I'm going to import print beautiful. Now, finally, I am going to be working with strings. So I'm going to say string and I am going to now define string type and UTF-8. Okay. I want to confirm if I make a call to a function, if I pass the signer, it matches the address of the owner of this smart contract or the account that deployed this module, which in this case is going to be my net to def underscore ADDR. Okay. If I go to my Tom file, right? If I go here, that address has a reference in the package file to this value, which means that if I print this out, I should see this address out. Okay. I want to build two constants. The first constant is going to be to generate error log message in case the signer doesn't match the owner of this module. Okay. Not owner. And this will be type U64 and the value is going to be zero. So this will be error code zero. We should see this when we do the test. Okay. So now we're going to say constant. And now what I want to do is I want to store this address in the global scope of the module and we will just invoke this constant. Okay. So I'm going to say owner and this one is going to be an address, right? And what I have to do, as we know, on the previous video, we talked about the addresses. I'm going to do at, I'm going to say net to def ADDR. Beautiful. Now let's build a function that is going to confirm if the signer, whoever is making a call to this module is the owner of the module. Else, if it's not the owner, we want to stop. Okay. So I'm going to say function check owner. We pass the argument. The argument is going to be account and it's going to be type signer. That's it. Okay. So now what I want to do is assert, right? And we are going to use one of the functions that we have available in signer. In signer, I can say address of and I can obtain the address value listen carefully the address value of whoever is making the call there's another one borrow address borrow address will return the reference to the value of the address don't worry it's going to make sense so now with that said i'm going to call signer address of and we pass the argument the reference to account okay if this matches owner right we want to continue if it doesn't match i want you to throw an error not owner as we declare that error code in the beginning of the module. Okay. And let's say it does pass. We want to print the address. Okay. So now let's say print and I'm going to pass. I can actually do this. I can grab this whole thing and I want to pass that reference once again and say this, this boom, beautiful. 
Okay, now let's build a test. I'm going to say test. And now inside this attribute, this test attribute, I can create a fake, a dummy account that I can use to pass it as the argument, right? I can do that. I can pass as an argument here. I can say account and I want to pass a value to that account. I can say, of course, at because it's an address and it's going to be zero X one to three. Okay. I'm just generating this fake account value of zero X one to three. And we'll use that. I know it's going to fail, but that's the idea. Then we'll use the right address. Okay. And I'm going to say test function. However, now I have to make sure that I can pass this as the argument down here, which means that I can do account once again, this will be signer. And now when I invoke account, I can pass this argument right here. I can pass the actual value. So I'm going to say check owner and now I can say account. Awesome. Beautiful. Let's take a look. Let's see if we don't run into any errors. Aptos move test. See how that goes. And we have a failure. Obviously, we are expecting an error. So it actually aborted with code zero. This is a great news. It's saying that we are not using string or UTF-8. Don't worry, because we know that we haven't used that, but we'll use this now. Okay, beautiful. So now let's fix this by passing the right value. So what I'm going to do under account, I am going to change this to be my net to def underscore ADDR. If I pass that, I should obtain the value of the address. It should pass successfully. So I'm going to say now here, give it a shot one more time. There we go. Beautiful. What do we see? We see effectively the address of net to def ADDR. So now let's continue. Let's go ahead and do the following. Now what I want to do is I want to borrow the address. The difference is because we are going to be grabbing the reference to the address value. I can use that reference and print that. So I can borrow the reference and use it on another function that if for some reason it's required for me to pass the reference instead of the actual address value, I can do it this way. Okay. Because if I don't do it with borrow, I'm effectively stripping the reference. So in case I need to use the address from the reference, that is the function that I need to execute. Check this out. Now what I'm going to do is a little bit different. I am going to declare a local scope variable that is going to be called address val. And this will be the same. It's going to be signer, but now it's going to be borrow address. What I have to pass, I have to pass the reference. Okay. I'm going to say account. Now I'm effectively obtaining the reference designer address, whoever is making the call. And now what I can effectively do is I can print this value straight without any reference. If you see here, I have to reference the signer address of account. I don't need to do this. All I have to do is address value. If I do this, I should obtain the address same way because we are already borrowing the reference to the value, not the value of the address is very different. And by the way, I can print something. I can say print UTF eight will be bytes and I can say owner confirm. Beautiful. And that's that should be it. OK, but first, let's make sure that it fails. So what I'm going to do is zero X one two three and let's give it a shot. It's going to fail. Boom. And it failed. It failed exactly the reason we expected. I'm going to fix that. I'm going to say instead net to def and that's it. So let me go here. Boom. And let's see how that goes. Boom. We have successfully passed the reference and we didn't have to invoke that reference. So we were able to already obtain the reference to the value of the signer and pass it and print it out. That's it for signer. Alrighty, that's it for signer. On the next video, we are going to take a look at the reference types, mutable and immutable and move. Let's make this happen.